Hello my fellow Archons, and welcome to the 12 Days of Keyforge Christmas, 2023 edition. This is the start of 12 days of daily uploads, counting down to Christmas with a new topic every day. We did this last year and people seemed to enjoy it, so I figured we could bring it back this year. It'll all end with a giveaway on day 12, so be sure to stick around and subscribe so you don't miss out. Without further ado, let's get into it. Each house in Grim Reminders has an artifact with the Curse trait. They enter play under your opponent's control, utilizing the new Treachery keyword, and hurt them in some way when their turn is over. They have a range of different abilities, from exhausting and stunning creatures to purging cards and losing ember. For the first day of Keyforge Christmas, we'll be ranking each of these curses from worst to best. Obviously, this list won't be absolutely perfect, since each matchup and scenario is different, but this is what I came up with based on my own personal opinion. Coming in at the bottom, at number 7, is the Curse of Fertility. It reads, at the end of your turn, if you did not play a creature this turn, your opponent gains one ember. I place this one here because unless you have a deck with a very low creature count, most turns you'll probably be able to play at least one creature, if not more. Even if you can't play a creature on your turn, that one ember given to the opponent hopefully won't put them in check, or if it does, hopefully the turn you take can bring them out of a position where that would happen. It seems like a relatively easy curse to avoid, at least compared to some of the ones coming up, and while giving the opponent an ember is never a good feeling, it's something that can usually be dealt with pretty easily, and will rarely be what makes or breaks a game. In the number 6 spot, we have the Curse of Disappearances. It reads, at the end of your turn, put a friendly creature into your opponent's archives. If that card leaves their archives, put it into its owner's hand instead. This one is dangerous in that it puts your creatures into a near unrecoverable location, your opponent's archives, that can be exploited using things like Memrox the Red. Unless they decide to pull their archives at some point, you're probably never seeing those creatures again, although Dysania would be a perfect counter. At first, you could allow your relatively unimportant creatures to be abducted, such as your General Zar Orhaz or Staunch Knights, but eventually, you may be forced to give up more important ones that give a lot of weight to your game plan. However, this curse is relatively slow paced and there are ways to lessen its impact. And if you don't have any creatures on board, it doesn't do anything. At number 5 is the Curse of Forgetfulness. We've seen this one as an anomaly in Winds of Exchange, and it reads, at the end of your turn, purge the top card in your discard pile. This will really force your opponent to be meticulous with how they sequence their turn, since if they're not, they may end up losing an important card for good. It is a curse that can be worked around to an extent, and done masterfully, it can even help the opponent thin out their deck to get rid of the pieces they don't want, and that's the last thing you want to help them with. Sometimes it may end up purging a critical card even with proper sequencing, but not all that often. If this comes out early, the amount of purge cards can really start building up. At number 4 is the Curse of Confusion, reading, At the end of your turn, exhaust each friendly creature of the active house. This one was kind of weird to me upon first glance because it exhausts each friendly creature of the house you just called. Again, it's all completely dependent on the scenario you're in, but it's effectively stopping you from going straight back into the house you just called and using those same creatures. Sometimes you may want to do that, sometimes you won't. Or if you play a ton of creatures of one house in a turn, you won't be able to use them the very next turn since they'll still be exhausted, and that can be pretty disruptive. It'll be great tech against huge token boards or those really scary Worlds Clyde Starline boards. Hopefully it can buy you a little extra time to find a way to remove them from the board entirely. Next up is number 3, where I've placed the Cursed of Obstinacy. It reads, at the end of your turn, stun each friendly non-flank creature that shares a house with one of its neighbors. Creature-heavy decks and token-spamming woe decks can really struggle against this one. It forces you to build out your battle line in a very specific way, avoiding putting creatures of the same house next to each other, though even that can be manipulated by the opponent through fighting or direct removal. I've played against this curse before, and it really makes it feel like you only ever have access to about half your battle line at a time, since multiple creatures are getting stunned turn over turn with very little you can do about it. Creatures with lots of play effects or passive effects probably won't be affected quite as hard, but it can still prevent fighting or reaping out consistently. At number 2 is the Curse of Cowardice. It reads, at the end of your turn, if you did not use any creatures to fight this turn, lose 2 Ember. If there are no friendly creatures in play, destroy Curse of Cowardice. This one is absolutely backbreaking, to the point where I almost considered putting it in the number 1 spot. Needing to fight with at least one creature every single turn, otherwise being faced with the consequence of losing a third of a key, is not a very inviting prospect, especially for the many decks out there that don't want to fight. Deck archetypes that don't really interact with the board may lose keys worth of ember over the course of the game, and could really struggle to gain any headway. And Curse of Cowardice only destroys itself if there are no friendly creatures, so if the opponent never puts down anything for you to fight, then you'll be stuck without that option and forced to lose 2 ember. Early game, when you're initially building out your board, man this artifact is going to hurt. And lastly, in the number one spot, we have the Curse of Spontaneity. It reads, at the start of your draw card step, discard your hand. That's a truly crazy effect. Your opponent will not be able to hold on to their combo pieces in hand. Building up a combo, piece by piece, is out of the question outside of archiving. 
That's insanely disruptive. If the opponent doesn't have a way to protect their cards, or they don't use the cards they were trying to save for the future right away, they'll just end up discarding them. Now, one drawback to this curse is that the opponent will be cycling through their deck extremely quickly, at least 6 cards at a time in most circumstances, so they may see those cards again soon. It was tight between this one and the Curse of Cowardice, and I feel that either of them could have been at number 1, but Curse of Cowardice can at least be prevented and even destroyed. This sort of turn over turn disruption and hand manipulation and combo removal is just crazy, and that's why it landed in the top spot. And there we have it! Every curse and grim reminders ranked from worst to best. Let me know what you would change or how you'd rank these curses in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts and ideas. All I know is that artifact control will be a must when your opponent gives you one of these. Thank you all so much for watching, and I can't wait to see you all again tomorrow for day 2 of Keyforge Christmas. See you later!